It's me, your mamja. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hope you like and subscribe. For today's video, I am going to discuss to you a brief introduction about periodic table of elements. Okay. He is Dimitri Mendeleev or Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev. So he created the first accepted version of the periodic table. That is why he called as the father of periodic table of elements. So he grouped elements according to their atomic mass and as he did, he found that the families had similar chemical properties. So blank spaces were left open to add the new elements he predicted would occur. Okay. So what is periodic table of elements? Okay. So it shows all known elements in the universe. It organizes the elements by the different chemical properties and the different characteristics of the elements in the periodic table. Okay, so how do you read the periodic table? Okay, so the number right there is what we called the atomic number. And then the letter in that box is what we call the chemical symbol of an element okay it is easy for us if we know the symbols of the elements rather than in knowing its real name it's because masyadong mahaba yung iba okay next yung nasa ibaba ng letter c is the name of an element so that is carbon and then the number below that is what we call the atomic weight okay next what is the atomic number okay when we say atomic number the number of protons found in the nucleus of an atom okay Remember that the number in your upper left corner is what we call the atomic number. Kung ano yung atomic number ng isang element, ito rin yung bilang o dami ng isang proton sa nucleus. Okay? Or the number of electrons surrounding the nucleus of an atom. Again, Kung ano yung atomic number na isang element is equal to the number of protons and as well as the number of electrons outside the nucleus of an atom. Okay, so what is the symbol? So the symbol is the abbreviation of the name of element. So, just like the given example, C is for carbon, H is for hydrogen, HE is for helium, SN is for tin, so on and so forth. Okay, so what is the weight or the atomic weight of an element? Okay, so atomic weight is also called as atomic mass. So, that is the number of protons and the neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. Or, it is derived at by adding the number of protons with the number of neutrons. Okay. The next, how do I find the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in an element using the periodic table. Okay, so that is the number of protons is equivalent to the number of atomic. And the next, number of electrons is equa equivalent to atomic number. 
while the number of neutrons is equal to the atomic weight minus atomic number or atomic weight minus atomic number is equivalent to the number of neutrons. The periodic table of elements displays the elements in increasing atomic number and shows how periodicity of the physical and chemical properties of the elements relates to the atomic structure. So the periodic table organizes the elements in a particular way. So a great deal of information about an element can be gathered from its position in the periodic table. So, for example, you can predict with reasonably good accuracy the physical and chemical properties of the element. And then, understanding the organization and plan of the periodic table will help you obtain basic information about each of 118 known elements. So, ngayon, meron tayo 100 known elements sa ating mundo. Okay, next. So, the periodic table of elements um, is divided into the two different parts. So, let's start with periods. So, the periods or the horizontal rows of an element is what we called periods. So, there are seven periods in our periodic table. Okay. So, the elements in a period are not alike in properties. So, in fact, the properties change greatly across even given row. So, the first element in a periodic is always an extremely active solid. And then, the last element in period is always an inactive gas. Remember that. Okay, next. Columns are called groups. So, columns of an element are called groups. So, as groups, aka families, are also known as families. So, elements in each family have similar but not identical properties. Okay, next. Ayan. So, groups or families are in the vertical columns, while the periods or series is called I are under horizontal rows. Okay, next. Group alkali metals or Others pronounce it as alkali. Okay. So, the group 1A or the dark brown color is what we call the alkali metals. Okay. Such as lithium, sodium, potassium, and other members of family 1A are all soft, white, and shiny metals. So, all elements in this family have the same number of valence electrons. Okay, next. The alkaline earth metals. Okay, the under group 2A, the dark brown color there. Okay. So, pag sinabi nating alkaline earth metals, they are never found uncombined in nature. So, they have two valence electrons. Alkaline earth metals include magnesium and calcium among others. Okay, next. Group halogens. Okay. Under group 7A, the dark brown color there. So, when we say halogens, the elements in this family or group are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. So, halogens have seven valence electrons, which explains 
why they are the most active non-metals. So they are never found free in nature. So they react with alkali metals to form salts. So like for example, sodium and chlorine. So, so that is sodium chloride. Okay, next. We have here the noble gases or the last group under group 8A yung nasa dulo. Okay. So, noble gases are colorless. So, that are extremely unreactive. So, one important property of the noble gases naman is their in inactivity or they are inactive because their are outermost energy level is full. So, because they do not readily combine with other elements to form compounds, the noble gases are called inert. So, the family of noble gases includes helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. So, all the noble gases are found in small amounts in Earth's atmosphere. Okay, next, region or the transition metals. Yung mga nasa ng element sa periodic table ay tinatawag nating transition metals. So, the transition metals are the mga, yung mga tinatawag nating transition elements include those elements in the B families. Okay? So, these are the metals that you are probably most familiar. Of course, the copper, tin, zinc, iron, nickel, gold, and silver. So, those are the most common example of the transition metals or transition elements. So, they are a good conductors of heat and electricity. Okay. And then, also, the compounds of transition metals are usually brightly colored and are often used to color paints. Transition elements have properties similar to one another and two other metals, but their properties do not fit in with those of any other family. So, many transition metals is combined chemically, of course, with oxygen to form compounds called oxide. Like, for example, is hydrogen peroxide or the agua oxinada. Okay, next. Next is the region metals. So, from, oh, okay, so, from your left side, and then hanggang sa bottom, and then some elements na nasa inyong right, ay tinatawag nating metals. Okay. So, metals are also a good conductors of heat and, and electricity. So, metals, of course, are shiny. So, metals are ductile or can be stretched into thin wires. For example, is yung copper. Okay. Next is, metals are malleable, can produce into thin sheets. So, uh, kayang panipisin yung mga metals or mga elements under the metals. Next is a chemical property of metal is its reaction with water which results in corrosion. Okay, next. We have here. Okay, next. We have here non-metals. So, when we say non-metals, that is, in, is located in your right side. So, they are the elements under nonmetals are poor conductors of heat and electricity. So, they are not ductile or malleable. So, solid nonmetals are brittle at madali itong mabasag or masira. So, they are dull. So, many nonmetals are gases. And then, as you can notice, one element 
and that is what we call hydrogen is nasa kaliwang side pero maituturing natin itong non-metals. Okay, so I'll discuss that later. Okay, next, metalloids. So, metalloids are the blue colors there in your screen. So, metalloids are what we call the metal-like because it has the, the properties of both metals and non-metals. So, they are solids that can be shiny or dull. And then, also, they can conduct heat and electricity better than non-metals, but not as well as metals. So, they are ductile and, of course, malleable. So, kanina, sinabi ko sa inyo, bakit yung isang element na ligaw dun sa pamilya ng metals? Okay, remember that is hydrogen. So, the hydrogen square sits atop in, under the family 1A, but it is a member of that, but that is not a member of that family. So, the, the real family of hydrogen is non-metals. Hydrogen is in class of its own. So, it is gas at room temperature. And it has one proton and one electron only in its one and only energy level. And as well as hydrogen only needs two electrons to fill up its valence shell. Okay, clear? Again, hydrogen is not a metal nor metalloids. So, hydrogen is non-metals okay so that would be all for this lesson hope there um there's something you have learned for today's lesson again thanks for watching so don't forget to like share and subscribe